Good morning, students. Can you hear me? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, good morning, ma'am. Can we begin the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma uh, have all the uh, persons who are to present around? I can see only some of the names. Just confirm whether the group members are there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can start presenting, but today being Friday, kindly uh, note that you have to wind up within the time span, right? Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma okay. Group leader's name is? Varisha. Is Varisha there? Yes, ma'am. Yours was the first name in that group, so we have made you the uh, we have made you the group leader. So can we have the presentation? Varisha is there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I will be presenting. This, this is the last group presenting. Let me also uh, communicate that uh, we got intimation about another group two days back, and we were not aware. So that is the tenth. Uh, that would be the tenth group. So in the next scheme of presentations, which we will start uh, by the next week, weekend, uh, we will schedule their presentation first because that will be part of this group, uh, this lot of presenters, and then we will begin the presentation. So we'll. Uh, also distribute the scheme that we have prepared today and uh, the review also. So one group was left out and uh, the reason that they say they could not uh, uh, form a group, they did not know each other and whomsoever they contacted was already had already made a presentation. So anyway, let's hope this group stays intact and for the next lot of presentation, which we start at the end of next week, uh, we can resort to keeping the same group unless and until one of you wants to change the partner that can be uh, wants to change a group for whatever reason that could be communicated to us. Okay, Varisha and the group members, we can begin presentation. Okay, ma'am. Anas? Can I share my screen? Uh -huh, share the screen and uh, the floor is yours now. Begin. Yes. So, good morning, ma'am, sir, and everyone else present. Our group today will be discussing on implementing new technology. We will be discussing the key factors important, the barriers, roles, uh, people bringing the change, people responsible for bringing the change, people who are taking the responsibility for bringing the change. A topic mainly revolves around the point as to how putting new technology is as important as implementing it. There is always a gap in between what was promised and what is delivered and implementation managers and people who are bringing the change always had faced problems in closing that gap. Some of those issues involve uh, dual role resistance to change, the correct width of promotion, internal marketing, uh, implementation, and taking responsibility. In the presentation, we will mainly be discussing those problems and how implementation managers and people responsible uh, overcome those barriers. A dual role. People bringing technological change must know both, that is developing new technology and also implementing it. The person implementing must lay down the changes in such a way that it becomes almost invisible for the user party, it becomes easy for them to accept the change. The easiest way to implement new changes or technology is to think of it as internal marketing because marketing always involves researching user preferences and their needs. Uh, marketing involves positioning of the product and uh, that is how implementing something successfully works. Because of this, implementation manager can find a perfect uh, match for the type of user and the type of change he is going to implement. And it also prepares the user to accept the new changes or the new innovation that is being introduced. Uh, I would like Aram Afiz now to discuss marketing perspective along with a few examples. As my fellow groupmate has already discussed about dual loans, I would like to progress further with the concept of marketing perspective. Marketing perspective is listening and reacting. It is giving an inside peek into a much deeper part of the business. Involving users during a designing of new technology increases user satisfaction, but the proper extent, timing, and type of user involvement varies from company to company. Let's take an example. 
software developers in an electronic office equipment company established a user design group at the prototype stage to work with the developers of an application software. <clears throat> Sorry. The users could try out the software every day on the same computer that was used by the developers. This helped, this helped in communicating by means of daily feedback from users to developers. It helped in improving the product design by solving problems and increasing user satisfaction. Marketing perspective also helps an organization in receiving and proper implementation of new technology. An innovation's technical superiority and strategic importance does not guarantee acceptance. <coughs> Therefore, it is important that developers invest heavily initially and user organizations invest sustainably for successful implementation of an innovation. Now let's discuss an example that will reinstate this point. Lack of infrastructure in the user organization resulted in delay of implementation for many months in a larger com communication and computer company. The new processing equipment was ready to be shipped to users, but a piece of linking software was not in place. There was a lack of training resources as the developers did not consider it as their responsibility to provide training. As a result, no one was prepared for this innovation and developers could not hand it off to user organization. Over to you, Arma. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Audible. Uh, thank you, Arham. As Arham has already highlighted the importance of marketing perspective, I would like to stress the importance of implementation as well because it is equally important. And for its success, the, impl the implementation managers must develop an accordion-like framework. As you can see on the screen, accordion is a musical instrument which is played by inflow and outflow of air. Similarly, an accordion-like process involves a search for information, a pause to digest it, another active period of search, a pause, and so on. This process continues in cycle after cycle. I would also like to mention that what information is important may vary at different levels of implementation process. But someone must act as a coordinator to gather information and that someone is the implementation manager. Now, let's try to understand this by an example. A turbine manufacturer designed a CNC system for shop floor control. Allow me to explain the concept of CNC system first. It stands for Computer Numerical Control System. A CNC system consists of three components. CNC software, machine control unit, and machine tool. Firstly, let's talk about CNC software. CNC software, again, consists of three software, that is operating software, machine interface software, and application software. These software help in operating both the controller and the computer in CNC system. Operating system software generates and handles the control signals to drive machine tool. The machine interface software acts as a link between the CPU and the machine tools to accomplish control function. And lastly, the application software consists of detailed step-by-step -step commands that direct the action of processing equipment. The second component of CNC is machine control unit. It consists of com computers and control hardware. <coughs> My apologies. It consists of computers and control hardware that store and execute the set of instructions by converting each command into mechanical actions of the processing equipment. It consists of components or subsystems like CPU, memory, I.O. interfaces, which stands for input and output interfaces, machine tool control, and sequence control. These components are interconnected by means of internal bus. The third component on CNC system is the machine tool, which is also known as processing equipment. The machine tool accomplishes processing steps by transforming the starting workpiece into a complete part. Its operation is directed by machine control unit. Most processing equipment consists of the work table and spindle, as well as the motors and controls to drive them. Now that the CNC system and how it works is understood, let's get back to the example of the turbine manufacturer that designed a CNC system for its shop floor control. During this process, the project managers were careful to observe the current job routine. 
This was done by system designers who visited the shop floors frequently and conducted interviews of 8 to 10 operators about their work. Certain parts required making decisions and seeking information, such as the tool or material to be used, the sequence of steps to be followed, and so on. These parts of work were given extra attention. Discussions about rewarding and frustrating aspects of work were held with the operators so as to understand the concerns of the operators better. The interrelation between this manufacturing process and other manufacturing processes was examined. It was observed that the machine operators were dependent on materials personnel, tool room, and order expeditors. Such interactive decisions with the machine operators enabled the system designers to understand the various variables involved in the work more clearly from the operator's perspective. This helped in designing a system that solved problems without creating new ones. It also enabled transmission of information to the users as they were educated and able to implement the innovation because of hands-on practice. Now, I would like to hand over the presentation to Philas. Thank you, Irma. Under the topic multiple internal markets, I'd like, uh, I'd like to be explaining what internal marketing is and how it affects the implementation of any new technology or any new software installation inside the company. Internal marketing is a process that functions to align, motivate and empower employees to deliver a satisfying customer experience. It is basically marketing inside the company to their employees, treating them as customers and uh, so that they can effectively carry out any desired programs and policies. It is a means of involving all the levels of the company in effective marketing programs that include training and staff development, effective internal communications and integration schemes. All these programs are designed in a way that they enhance the knowledge and overall marketing within the organization. Now moving forward. Internal market viable in the implementation of innovations, placing and gaining acceptance of new systems in the company by considering the following techniques and methods. Managers must draw up their internal marketing plans in the light of the company goals and, get, uh, and objectives. They should know what the goals are and create the mar marketing plans as, as per. Managers should identify the individuals or groups whose acceptance is essential and necessary for an innovation success and successful implementation. Whenever managers define their problems or needs such as innovation in technologies or installation of software to any higher organizational levels like the top management such as the CEOs, the C CFOs and the CTOs the more are the chances of a successful implementation. But at the same time, the closer the definition and solutions of problems are to the end users, the end users that would actually eventually use the system, the greater is the probability of success. The managers must then plan their approach in accordance to their target group, ranging from top management to the end users. That is the working organizational level. They have to take care of this paradox with a dedication so that uh, there's no sort of uh, a problem in inequality in the company's hierarchy. Determining whom to approach, how to approach and what arguments to use, respectively in both or all the cases. Finally, the manager is supposed to conduct meetings regarding the choice or the development of the innovation, further leading to its implementation. The managers should, like I mentioned, the managers should equally give importance to the ultimate user level during the decision making process. An example of this case of internal marketing is given of a marketing organization that switched from manual files to an electronic filing and data retrieval system, which is used by both accountants and secretaries. The managers decided to take their time and do it right the first time and instead of doing it over and over again. The project manager then set up a committee of elected representatives of all the groups that were affected uh, by the new installation of software. The committee met regularly to select the right software and they realized that they needed a custom one, a custom software that would get all the features they wanted suitably. The result uh, was an inventive and widely used system that got, got well accepted throughout the uh, company and others as well. So we can conclude that internal marketing in companies smoothens the transition from the older equipment or systems to the new and improved ones, and it eases the management aspects of it. Now. I'd like to invite my colleague, Mr. Hassan Arif, to present further throughout the presentation. Thank you, Faraz. Coming to the topic, promotion versus hype. It may be overly optimistic to believe that innovation will sell itself, but it is equally dangerous to oversell the new system. 
Novel and exotic technologies are especially vulnerable to hype. <clears throat> Articles in the media about robots and artificial intelligence raise expectations far higher than the actual performance of current technologies. For example, when one computer maker developed AI software to be used in manufacturing the outside world, though it was a finished product long before it was out of the vaporware stage. Being an attractive topic, the sale caught the attention of the public, which resulted in forming a gap between expectation and reality. The oversale presented a platform, a problem to implementation managers who had to fight the perception that their project was far behind the schedule and the project and the product delivered less than a promise. Moving to the next slide, risky topic, safe innovation. The reasons for conducting a pilot operation before introducing innovation is to serve as an experiment and provide technical feasibility to the top management and serve as a credible demonstration model for other units in the organization. If the innovation must succeed, the implementation manager must select a pilot site that is virtually risk-free but does not provide meaningful value to the organization or serves as a model for other units. The worst performing unit is not a better option for implementing the innovation because if the project fails, the implementation manager will have no way of knowing how much of the failure was due to the site issues and how much was due to the innovation. For example, a large, for example, a large computer manufacturer's business suffered from a problem that if the customer cancels the order, the partially built system were either, were either scrapped or matched with incoming orders to determine if the fit was close enough for retrofitting. When this matching process was computerized at the first application site, it was to be phased out in a matter of months. The first application was successful, but the operators were closed down before the site could serve as a demonstration for other plants. Coming to the next slide, distance is, all, distance is always an important factor in utilizing new facilities. For example, in a huge oil business, new computer terminals were used first by those with nearby offices and gradually by people a few feet further down the corridor. Sometimes, opinion leaders strongly oppose new technologies. Involving them in the planning process may help in smooth implementation. Getting them to try the innovation may require nothing more elaborate than a well-placed and tactful presented training session. The implementation officer will always face hardships while implementing new technology. But he should always avoid the hurdles and work around employees who are open to change by being a role model to others. A huge warehouse used unorthodox crane operators instead of using workers on the loading platform to build a material handling system. Management could, management could gradually implement the system throughout the factory after the crane operators work out, worked out the issue because of their relative youth and diverse origins. The crane operators were not initially though to be opinion leaders, but they were both open to new ideas and not too dissimilar to be unsuitable role models. Over to, over to Varisha. Varisha, you're on mute. So now I will take this presentation forward with the topic positive impacts of society or positive impacts uh, of implementing new technology, which is subdivided into three parts, that is impacts on society, impacts in workplace, and impacts on culture. First, we will talk about the impacts on society, which is education. Education means we already have many learning platforms aggregating courses or different uh, age groups, all from different fields and industry. They usually contain videos, interactive boards for practice, and this alone makes education much accessible and scalable. And also we have many examples, e-learning uh, platforms like Baijus and Academy. Also artificial intelligence can help students with disabilities determine the best way for them to learn efficiently. Number two is environment protection, smart cities. If you ask someone how technology influences the uh, like environment, they're likely to say very badly. And of course, yes, it is the past decades, past few decades, uh, past few decades. But the ultimate awareness of the necessity to protect the environment has been growing over the last decade. And technology has been one of the quickest industry to jump on the train. 
there are many environmental startups called green startups one i have mentioned here that is brickify it is a nigerian startup in which they use the uh, recycled waste to make the bricks which is uh, resistant to water uh, resistant to heat resistant to fire and also water the third one is collaboration tools of course it is very useful these days and during the recent shutdown collaboration tools including the uh, like whatsapp uh, zoom meetings and uh, we use it to uh, connect with the people or a family or the colleagues and the professionals and uh, moving towards the next slide anas thank you impacts in workplace for example workers spend a lot of time doing repetitive tasks like sending emails entering data and much more so automated technology in the workplace put this tedious process uh, on autopilot and also when you give your employee access to the tools and technology they need to do their jobs and let them use them in the way that works best for them they will be more efficient and engaged and therefore much happier improve cost management we know the bottom line of any business is to achieve profitability so as the employees are encouraged to optimize their time thanks to such technologies companies experience significant decreases in operating cost by letting their employees work from home and use their own devices which is byod or bring your own devices and of course it makes sense with fewer employees less space materials and utilities the number 3 the ability to better serve customer technology in the workplace has allowed business to better market to their customer and faster customer services now i will talk about the impacts on culture collect and share accurate real data for example a hiring manager can collect all the information on a candidate resume application interview notes and feedback and access it from any other devices in this way hiring decision can then be made faster and also at many places like hospitals railway stations airports etc provide and receive feedback which help us to improve the service there are online uh, there are online feedback system earlier we used to get a feedback book for writing the feedback but now we get a link for writing feedback suppose if we buy something online after delivering it to get a, uh, we get a link for the uh, for giving reviews for giving feedback number third offer more flexibility technology makes it easier for employees to work while traveling or even at home we have seen during pandemic every second person is working from home efficiently and uh, shows flexibility in the world so that's all my from side now my friend farwa will take this presentation forward thank you thank you varisha uh, so technology can be a bane or a boon obviously depending on how one uses it in this rapid changing world where digitalization has become the norm technology has helped make things faster eco friendly and helps one stay connected but the issue is that it is often misused in the workplace and this may hamper the pace at work so now i will be talking about the negative impacts or the drawbacks in implementing the new technology the first one is resistance to technology while on one hand employees may be enjoying the technology they may have some kind of resistance towards adopting a new one another aspect is that uh, technology especially when used to reduce labor or manpower means downsizing this could also result in some employees resisting or not adapting to a newer one a change in a change in uh, environment can create anxiety and lead to resistance especially when the change directly affects how they do their job so the second one is security risk this is in relation to data and frauds that happen at the workplace as new technology is implemented the company becomes more and more prone to frauds the next one is uh, implementation and maintenance issues while implementing a new production technology there are bound to be bugs in the system that could not even stop production for a time but also can do a lot a machine or a process may not perform in the manner you need uh, for them and it may require additional tweaking to gain necessary results the next one is losses or nefarious activity online systems seem to be an invitation for hackers to attack for example small businesses owners tend to utilize outdated softwares without even updating the proper version or patches to fight against hackers when this thing occurs the business is susceptible to malware ransomware or viruses that could hijack online operations 
whole data hostage and they even funnel sale transactions to an uh, uh, to an account overseas you know even with the most updated protections such as firewalls and appropriate softwares a business is still subject to the potential loss of data for example if the hard drive crashes a business is still subject to the potential loss of data and the information isn't backed up the business is left with nothing but trying to build a database and rather than conducting sales the next one is the loss of interpersonal communication skills cell phones email texting and social media have largely replaced face to face communication the ability to use the people you interact with for example on facebook or on twitter isn't an option in the workplace whether dealing with fellow workers or with clients interpersonal communications critical to building business relationships are very much complicated and the required courtesies and listening skills not necessary in social media too much reliance on electronic methods of communication not only can increase unnecessary traffic but can decrease vital personal interaction so the last one is the reduced productivity when this thing keeps one hooked on to the fact that they will have to adjust and work with something absolutely new which is out of their comfort zone and so many people usually back out due to this reason which leads in the lack of productivity at workplace so now i would like my friend shamil to take over with the next topic good morning everyone good morning ma'am uh, my topic is the the many and the one the the things that i am going to speak about plays a uh, plays a very crucial role for every successful business that we see around for any innovation to succeed the team implementing the innovation must include a few specific professionals which are a sponsor a champion a project manager and an integrator to be specific a sponsor is usually a high ranking person who makes sure that the project receives financial and manpower resources and who is wise about the politics of the organization a champion is a problem solver for the innovation a diplomat and also acts as a sales person for the innovation a project manager is someone who oversees all the administrative details and an integrator is someone who manages conflicting agendas and molds the group through his communication skills <laughs> even if all of these roles are filled the project may still fail or get delayed some of the reasons that it might fail are if the organization does not delegate enough authority to a single person to make things happen new technology generally requires the establishment of a supporting infrastructure as well as the allocation of financial resources to prepare the implementation site a champion or a diplomat based in the development group who lacks authority among the recipients must rely on time consuming individuals individual persuasion to obtain the necessary resources furthermore even if prospective users believe in the value of an innovation they may have to persuade the superiors to release those resources uh, release those resources what businesses can do to avoid such problems one of these individuals usually the sponsor or the champion must have enough organizational power to mobilize the necessary resources and that power base must encompass both technology developers and users by encouraging ownership of an innovation in a user organization for example skillful advocates can create a power base to pull rather than push the innovation along in the end i would like to give an example explaining the above points a manufacturer of engineering test equipments went into trouble because many orders for its customized products reached the plant floor missing vital components technical ex experts were able to catch the omissions but the mechanics of checking orders and cycling them back through the purchase order process cost enormous amount of time money and most importantly customers goodwill customers were angry at the delay of orders for and were even more dismayed when price quotations has to be revised upward because of a part forgotten in the first go round a technology was internally developed to offer a partial solution to this uh, the technology was a computer program that could automatically check the orders before the sales person issued quotations 
although the people who placed the orders were enthusiastic about the concept the work of implementing the system was fraught with problems no sales manager was willing to function as either sponsor or champion for the innovation although a user group funded its development the appointed champion in that organization was too low too low in the hierarchy to control the resources necessary to install the system moreover he lacked a clear endorsement for the project from his superiors he was therefore slow to seek the resources and upper management support that would have moved the project forward quickly ultimately proper division of power and a strong inter team dialogue will surely help in quick and proper implementation of an innovation in a business thank you and i like uh, madhiha to carry forward our presentation madhiha. thanks jamil i'll be discussing the problem of resistance to change whenever we talk of any kind of change there comes along with it some resistance same goes while implementation of any new technology so beginning to wisdom is to anticipate resistance and any new technology capable of inspiring strong advocacy will also provoke opposition there can be a multiple reasons for employees to resist change they could be employees being habituated with the status quo so employees are often content with their existing work conditions problems come up when they are introduced to new tools and processes they value the stability and the predictable nature of a daily work routine and hence employees being used to the ordinary often resist change another reason could be fear of the unknown some employees may have been doing the things same way for many many years and any new change that is introduced might make them anxious about their future at the company they may hence develop a fear of the unknown fear that they may not have the competence to use new technologies efficiently another reason can be fear of losing their jobs the ultimate fear of many employees is that any technological advancement might end up rendering them expendable and that might result in them losing their jobs and lastly it could be because of reluctance on the part of manager so if a manager merely employs the technological change and plays little part in seeing to its implementation there will be resistance from the side of employees so the manager has to see that whatever technologies are being introduced must be properly communicated and at the same time the employees must be given proper training and also enough time to get familiar with all of those changes now moving on to the next slide i will be discussing fear of loss so fear of loss often develops because of the de-skilling potential of new computerized technologies de-skilling forces employees to trade their hard earned manual skills for the often dull and boring routine of button pushing button pushing here refers to the machine jobs so let us now look at some ignored aspects of de-skilling Implementers often pay little attention towards the necessity of extending concern about de-skilling to foremen and supervisors. The foremen and supervisors do not, of course, actually have to run the new machinery or to possess the knowledge of the system that daily operators do. And so, giving subordinates knowledge that supervisors and foremen do not have undermines their credibility. This can further be understood using an example. So there was this pulp mill which introduced a new computerized control room when the representatives trained the operators and their assistants however no similar effort was made for the foremen who thought that they had lost control over the mill's operations some of the operators relinquished their power by tactfully educating their foremen but others felt they had earned the right to more autonomy because the foreman's knowledge was obsolete another one could be the fear that the innovation will be politically enfeebling and that supervisors and even operators will lose some control by adopting it thank you that's all from my side i will now like to hand over to ashad thank you madhya so i'll tell you about the personal benefits in terms of implementation of technology let me ask uh, let me first tell you about the positive of technology first any innovation or invention or discovery in terms of technology brings an upgraded version to an older version of itself since most of the new innovation relies on minimizing the workload of people 
it makes the innovation more important and rewarding once new innovation comes to effect it expands influence to work it increases value for work has a greater recognition being part of a valued implementation team and it also gives solution of a long standing problem a long resolution of it let us now discuss about the problems faced by individuals people operating on these new technologies and firms mainly don't get the recognition they actually deserve as the recognition is most of the time taken by the higher officials sitting on the better seats present <coughs> present happenings within the companies nowadays technologies accrues to organizations instead of the individuals managers are more concerned about how the how fast the process is or how low will it cost them instead of how the output or the result came out for them organizations rhetoric is supported indeed mandated and the reward structure is militated against the individuals yes there are ways to resolve this problem so let us discuss some of the ways which i find will be good to resolve them think hypothetically what if these hard working individuals <coughs> sorry what if these hard working individuals or the not rewarded ones be given the credit they deserve why not inclusivity been implemented for people who don't know what inclusivity is let me tell you in simple words it is just giving access or opportunities and resources to those who usually gets left out being one who actually deserve interaction should be done between high and low level officials timely motivation through perks if, uh, should be given for every involving individuals now let me ask mehak to speak about his views thank you ashan similar to the existence of the roles of champions in the organization like shamil mentioned we also have certain individuals known as hedgers now who are hedgers you ask these are individuals who refuse to take a stand against an innovation so that others can address their objections but who also refuse to support the new technology they straddle the fence and are ready to leap down on either side to declare that they had foreseen the value of the innovation all along or that they had known that it would fail from the start they are risk averse managers and they can affect the future of technology when they are a key link in the implementation plan they can be found at any level in the organization and dealing with them requires an effective sequence of actions which we will see in the next slide the first and the easiest is to persuade top management to take some kind of quick symbolic action in support of the innovation when uh, whether the action takes the form of a memo a speech or a minor policy change it must send a signal that top management will stand behind this technology even in a budget crisis the second step which is harder is to help managers at all levels send out the right signals if for instance the first step was an announcement of a new drive for quality the second step should be to increase the emphasis on quality throughout the company the third step which is the hardest yet the most necessary is that managers must bring the criteria used to judge the performance of innovation users into conformance with the demands of the new technology because new technologies often require new measures if for example a new structured software technique requires more time than did the old managers must evaluate programmer analysts less on the basis of the quantity of output than on the basis of its quality other adjustments might include introducing a phase in period for the new technology during which the usual output measures do not apply it would also make sense to reward people for preventing rather than just solving the problems and also for rewarding them for developing work behavior identified with the new technology converting hedgers into believers is not a simple task but it is one of the more inescapable challenges implementation managers face as they try to implement new technology now i would request hamad to conclude the presentation thank you mahak at the end i would like to conclude the discussion despite billions of dollars being spent on research and development by american corporations there is frequently a disturbing gap between the intrinsic worth of the technology they generate and their ability to put it to productive use in this era of intense global competitiveness the gap between technical promise and true achievement is of particular concern although implementing new technology brings along a lot of speed bumps it is the job of the implementation managers to lay down those changes in such a way that it becomes almost easy 
for everyone to detect the change. Innovation can be introduced and implemented smoothly and successfully only if equal efforts are made towards development as well as implementation. At the same time, it is also important to communicate with the users of the new technology in order to improve its design to benefit them. But introducing technology is not an easy task. People will always try to resist change. Distance, time and environment will always become an excuse in the path of adapting change. There will be opinion leaders who will be stuck to their ways. But it is the responsibility of the implementation manager to find the right crack. In a nutshell, it all comes down to treating introducing innovation as marketing because only that will help the implementation manager to find the right type of users for the right type of product. Thank you. This is the end of our presentation. Students can ask any question if they have a query, but relevant questions. Uh, Ma'am, I want to ask uh, Arma. Arma, you talked about the uh, CNC system. So what's the purpose behind using the CNC system for an urban manufacturer? My apologies. Uh, you talked about the CNC system working. Am I right? Yes. Uh, so what's the purpose behind uh, using that system for a turbine manufacturer for shop floors? Right. Okay. So if I understand your question, you are asking about the CNC system uh, for a turbine manufacturer, right? You are not audible at all. Clearly. If I'm right, ask about how does the CNC system in a turbine manufacturing plant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, a CNC system is a computer numeric control system. And if we talk about the turbine manufacturing plant, then um, basically a number of manufacturing systems in assembling a turbine. If we think about it manually, then um, it involves a number of processes and steps which can be complete and uh, lengthy. And it has a number of uh, errors also. It has a number of errors. So uh, a CNC system uses possible to organize all the jobs that are to be done by the machine in a proper manner so that it can be avoided in the error state during the manufacturing process. And also, it can uh, also enable to schedule uh, and track and the uh, entire timing of the uh, manufacturing process so that it can be executed in a meeting required. Okay, thank uh, you. Is another question is mine, sir. Ma'am, can, can I answer? Can I ask? Yes, Abdullah, you can ask. Abdullah. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the processes project manager has to follow. So, what key observation about the role of a manager was understood from your group by this? Uh... Okay, so your uh, okay. Uh, the process is the observation that manager made during the entire process of implementation, right? Yes, in the life cycle, from the cycle. Okay. What is the role so, of the manager? Uh, right, I understood your question. Uh, so basically, if we talk about the role of the manager in the market, uh, then uh, the most important skill that is used by the manager is interpersonal skills. Because uh, if we are, if we are uh, introducing an innovation into an organization, then it requires a lot of communication to be working. You are using your interpersonal and human skills so as to make it uh, possible to implement the innovation uh, successfully into the organization. So, uh, it made a difference in the of communication skills that a manager must possess 
so as to implement a new technology successfully into the automated home. Okay. Uh, another question for you, Arma. You mentioned about CNC machine. So there is one another term related to CNC, and that is called NC. So can you do you know the difference between a CNC machine and an NC machine? Uh, by NC, do you mean uh, numeric control machine? Yeah, full form is numerical control. Numeric control. What is the difference between a numerically controlled machine and a computerly uh, computerized numerical control machine? Okay. Uh, at the moment, the the programming is done in the alphabet, Okay, thank you. Ma'am, I have a question if I am allowed to ask. How is it? You may. Ma'am, uh, there is someone who mentioned about the uh, floor control practices, right? Uh, who is that? Uh, can I get to know? Floor control practices, FCP. Yes, uh, no. Floor control practices. So my question is, it was more about shock control. Okay, so uh, Arma, can you tell me exactly what control a uh, floor here indicates? Right, we are talking about turbine manufacturers. So in this case, the shock control that we are talking about is the manufacturing floor where the work is done by the employee. Uh, in other terms. And in other examples, it can also be referred to uh, the entire tracking and uh, recording process of the shipment. But okay. in this so, case, we are talking about the manufacturing floor. Okay. So, can you please differentiate between this floor and the flooring of the price which we uh, have studied, if you can recall? Price flooring, if you remember? No, I'm sorry, I'm unable to call uh, Okay, okay. So, not a problem. Thank you so much. Ma'am, I have, I have one clarification to ask from Ferris. Can I please? Yes, Adil. Sure, sure. Ferris, could you? Just let me uh, mention the questions are addressed to everybody. So anybody can the, uh, from the group can answer. Okay, sure, okay. ma'am. Ferris, could you please show your first slide once, if you can? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll go to that. Put this one, multiple internal models. Yes, I would ask, uh, Ferris, I would like to ask you to shed some light on effective internal communication. Yes, you're muted, you're muted. Ras, I'm muted. Sorry, am I, am, I, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. So, effective internal communications, like the name suggests, internal communications is communication inside the company, just like my topic, internal marketing which is uh, marketing inside the company to the employees itself, treating them as customers. So internal communications is basically, the purpose of it is basically to um, enhance and uh, get a better con uh, communication throughout all the levels of the company and all the departments. So that, uh, for example, the, the, the communication is obviously, uh, the main point of communication is to, uh, to get to the top managers, the for example, the high table and the lower level, because there's not a direct conversation in, in them. In, there's no open dialogue in them. So the managers are supposed to uh, get, transmit their information to them. The flow should be throughout all the levels, basically. That's okay, what okay, thank you. All right. Okay, Shami. Uh, Shami, am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Shamil, uh, I think you were the one who presented the slide, the many and the one, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what was the solution? Uh, the manufacturing company, the manufacturer of those uh, uh, engineering equipment, he was in trouble because the customers were angry or the delayed, you know, delayed delivery. So, what was the solution? 
so uh, basically the case i presented was uh, not about the solution it was uh, it was about the problem that can arise if uh, certain distribution of power is not there proper distribution of power and uh, certain dialogues between the end users and the manufacturer is not there so it was about the problem and at the end i uh, of uh, i said a line that uh, we need to have a proper distribution of power among the among both the sides and a proper dial dialogue between them so if i have to get my work done or get a deal done to the other side so it gets done immediately okay shamil thank you now mehak thank you, you uh, why you suggested for dealing with the hedgers you mentioned symbolic action in support of the innovation how do we come how do we do that symbolic action in support of the innovation yes sir thank you sir for the question um so sir uh, whenever any new policy or anything is introduced in any company ideally uh, everyone would want that the top management should back it up with some sort of symbolic action like i mentioned and that symbolic action could be in the form of a memo in the form of a uh or organization wide email or anything like that which suggests that you know we are introducing this policy and we're not going to change it no matter what happens okay thank you yes moin wanted to ask a question moin can ask is it there yeah ma'am sure. so you from may. the overall presentation uh, what's the impact of increasing dependency on mediated communication and relationship and communities the overall dependency increases on uh, am i clear with my question yes so uh, yes you are clear with your am i audible yeah yeah yes yeah so uh, basically the main idea behind successful implementation of a technology or an innovation into an organization revolves around the fact that how the implementation process is followed right so and in order to in order for successful imp implementation it is necessary to have a proper communication between different levels of uh, the organization like the example i gave about the turbine manufacturer in that example we saw that one of the observations uh, that was done by the project managers was that they interacted with the workers with the operators on regular basis so as to understand their perspective about it this would enable us to uh, design a system for them that would benefit them without creating any further new problem for them because here we are because here we are talking about reducing problems instead of uh, instead of uh, you know so yeah so if communication is not done properly then what would happen is that instead of reducing these problems we are adding on to those problems for the people who are supposed to be benefited from those uh, new technological advancements and innovation if anyone else wants to add to the answer they can go ahead yes uh, so, supporting amma's point uh, it is an important factor good communication and putting uh, the new technology the new implementation to work is as important as uh, implementing new change so they both work simultaneously bringing new change and then implementing it also adding on to it uh, considering uh, taking everybody along uh, having team work from the higher level to the lower level if everybody is considered the lower level officials basically working on that particular thing will be enthusiastic for doing better next time so everybody must be taken along shall i ask you uh, somebody presented on uh, project manager and uh, negotiator somebody there was a slide where they, they showed the roles uh, yes ma'am yes ma'am four uh, four professional roles yeah yeah ha huh. it's very nicely presented uh, the many uh, one who who's this person shamil shamil i just want to for an innovation to such implementation team should include pilot operation sponsor project manager champion integrator so so for any project what is the role of a project manager ma'am the role of a project manager is to look all the matlab uh, to overlook all the administrative de details 
Uh, anybody so else? Supervise, to... supervise all the administrative details. Any, anybody who wants to add? People who are receiving the change project manager uh, checks that if the, the new change that is being delivered to them, if they are easy with that, if they are accepting it pretty well or not. Then what's the difference between a project manager and a champion, a project champion? Uh, champion, I think, ma'am, uh, he does. Uh, project uh, manager. Uh, the champion, uh, man. Shamila, uh, Shamila, yeah. Shamila, answer uh -huh. first. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh -huh. yes, Ma'am, a uh, champion, as I said, is someone who's a problem solver for the innovation, a diplomat and a salesperson for the innovation. So if I am a champion and a project man, like Anas is the project manager and I'm working under him as a champion. So he's overseeing all the details and I am in. And what I'm doing is I'm uh, trying to work with the other side of the user. OK, uh, can you uh, Anas add to it? Yes, ma'am. That is what I was trying to say. That I will be supervising everything, and a champion will know. Uh, he will be following my orders, and he has some experience, and he'll be doing the work. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I think we are over the presentation. Anything anybody wants to ask? It was a very good uh, presentation, and in fact, most of the groups have presented well. But specifically, I will give you uh, uh, feedback on the group presentation. Individual. Uh, some comments on the slide, some comments on the time taken, some comments upon the coordination between members. It was a good uh, presentation. Thank you, students. Thank so you. Thank you. For thank for you. And thank then we thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.